Good morning, everybody. So this is Wednesday, March 10th, and this is your phonics lesson for today. We are on a unit five, lesson eight. Okay, and we are going to start. We're going to start with some sound scientists, which is a little bit different than what we have been doing. Um, We've been doing the mix it up, but we're going back to the sound scientists today. So let me share my screen with you. And we've done these before, but it's been a while, so you may not remember them. All right, so here is the two sentences we're going to look at first. Okay, the first sentence says, my book isn't where it usually is, so I will have to search for it. So the word that we're going to look at is the word search. How many syllables are in the word search? So remember, we're going to do the syllables. We're going to put our hand under our chin and say search. How many times did my chin go down? Search. Just once. So there are one syllable in the word search. Now, how many sounds do you hear in the word search? Stretch that out. How many do you hear? Okay, so I hear search, search. So I hear three sounds. What is the third sound of that word? Okay, so we search. So the third sound is the ch sound. So if we change that ch sound to Let's try that and see what that word's going to be. What is that new word going to be? Surf. Very good. All right, so let's listen to the sentence again, but we're going to and we're going to change the word search to surf, okay? My book isn't where it usually is, so I will have to surf for it. Does that make sense? That doesn't make any sense, does it? No. So let's leave it. It's the word search. So what does search mean? Based on this sentence, what does the word search mean? Yeah, it means you have to look for it. Good. All righty. Our second sentence says, it's impossible for a frog to drive a bus. How many syllables are in the word impossible? Ready? Impossible. How many times did my chin go down? Impossible. Four times. So there are four syllables. Very good. And the vowel sound that you hear in the first syllable. The first syllable was M. What's the vowel sound in that, in that syllable? Yeah, it's the I sound. Okay, what's the vowel sound in the second syllable? M pos. Pos is the second syllable. What is the vowel sound that you hear? The ah. Oh, very good. And what is the third sound of that syllable? Not the vowel sound, but just the whole third sound. So let's do it again. M, M, pa, e. What's the third sound? E. Very good. So what word would you get if you took the entire first syllable off the word? What was the first syllable again? M. If we take M off the first, the whole word, we get possible. What is that word? Possible. Is that a word? Yeah, that is a word. So we're going to say the sentence again, but this time we're going to use possible instead of impossible. All right. It's possible for a frog to drive a bus. Does that make sense? It makes sense, but is it true? No, that can't be true. A frog can't drive a bus. So 
it changed the sentence because it went from a true statement to a not a true statement. It, it's a can't happen to a can happen. So if we take the word to take M off the word pos impossible, it changes the word. Impossible means that it can't happen, but possible means that it can happen. So when we have M in front of the word, it means that it's not possible. Okay, so we're gonna manipulate our phones and we're gonna do it a little bit differently this time, okay? Today, we are just gonna substitute the first sound of the blend, okay? So our first sentence for today is, Add some salt to the fries. Say that word with me, salt, salt. And if we break that apart by sound, we have salt, salt, good. But we're gonna take this first sound of and we're going to change it to off. What is the new word on the curve going to be? It's going to be soft, very good. All right, our second sentence, the mink jumped high. And if we break this apart by sound, we have m ink. So the ink is the blend. And we're gonna substitute this part of the blend with ul. M Ilk. So what is the new word on the curve? Milk. Very good. All right. Our next sentence, I think back to the past a lot. Past is the word on the curve. Let's break it apart by sound. We have past. Past. But we're going to change this sound right here to n. And what is the new word on the curve? It is pant. All right, our next sentence, I dunk my head in the swimming pool to get wet. So the word dunk is what we're looking for. And if we break it apart by sound, we have dunk, dunk. Good. And we are going to change this sound, the first sound of this of the blend, to d -usk. What is the new word on the curve going to be? Dusk. Very good. All right. In our last sentence, I like to rest before I play. Let's break this apart by sound. We have r s r s. This is the blend. We're going to substitute this sound with n, r, and, r, and. So the new word on the curve is going to be rent. Very good. All right. Now your spoonerism today is yummy and easy. Only two words. No blends this time. All right. So it is jawberry string. Jawberry struce. Oh, there is a blend. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. There is a blend. Let me show it to you. Jawberry struce. What do you think that's supposed to say? It's supposed to say strawberry juice. There's that blend right there. It's a three letter blend, too. How did I miss that? I was not paying attention this morning. Strawberry juice is the spoonerism. All right, so our learning targets for today are, I can identify vowel sounds in words. I can read and write words with the schwa sound and spellings, and I can read the story, The Fire. So let's review some of our sounds that we have learned so far today. All right, so far this year, and we're going to do a quick review of verbs followed by the sounds from the flip code book. 
All right, so here is the first sentence. He swims. What is the verb in this sentence? What's the action? Okay, it's swims, very good. So swims is the verb. What is the vowel sound in the word swims? Now, as I'm not asking you for the vowel letter, I'm asking for the vowel sound. The vowel sound is the I in swims. Good. So it's the I. Now don't say I because it doesn't say I. It says I in this word. So the I is the vowel sound. So if we had a car, our code flip book, you could look at it yourself, but I will show you mine. Kind of taking a while, isn't it? I don't have very much of a signal, apparently. Wow. Okay, hold on. I'm going to pause the video for just a second until this gets up uploaded. Okay, it finally upload opened up. So we are looking for the I sound. So I'm going to go all the way down to where I see green because remember vowel sounds are in green. Oh, here's some green. All right, and here I have the I sound with the letter I, just like we have in the word swims. All right, so we have I for the I sound, like in the word it, pit, sit, fit, lip, and swim. And look how big the power bar is, guys. It tells us what the letter I spelling for the I sound is used almost all the time. All right, so here's our second sentence, the play. What is the verb in this sentence? Play, yes. Play is the verb. What is the vowel sound in the word play? Right, it's the A sound. A is the sound. So let's go back to our flip book and we'll find the A sound. There we go, A-Y for the A sound, like in the, let, in the word day. All right, so we have the A-Y spelling for the A sound, like in the word day. Here is our third sentence. She hides. What is the verb in this sentence? Hides, yes, hides is the verb. What is the vowel sound in this word hides? It is the I, remember with the I consonant E. So here we have the I sound with I consonant E, like in the word bite. All right, so I consonant E, like in the word bite. Here is the next sentence, we feel. What is the verb in that sentence? It is feel, good. And what is the vowel sound? in the word feel. It is the E, good. Let's look in our code book and here is the E sound, the E, -E spelling like in the word B. Good, we have the double E's to make the E sound in the word B. The next sentence, I wrote. What is the verb of that sentence? Yes, it is the word wrote. Good. And what is the vowel sound in the word wrote? It is the O spelled with O consonant E. Let's look at our flip book. Here we have the O sound with O consonant E right there, like in the word home. Good. 
So we have O consonant E spelling for the O sound in the word home. All right, the next sentence, we fell. What is the verb in this sentence? We have the word fell is the verb. And what is the vowel sound in the word fell? Okay, we have the eh sound, good. Let's look at our chart and here is the eh sound like in the word pet with the E spelling, just like we have here. The power bar shows us it's a very common way to make that eh sound with just the letter E. And here's our last sentence, he did cry. What is the verb in this sentence? Cry is the main verb of this sentence. What is the vowel sound in that, that word? It is the I sound with the letter Y. So let's go back here. The I sound with the word letter Y as in try, just like we have here. The Y spelling makes the I sound in try. All right, so last time we met yesterday, we learned about a new sound. Who remembers the name of this sound? It sounded really weird. Yeah, it is the schwa sound, okay? And remember that sometimes the schwa sound can take the place of an A, like in about, and sometimes it can take the place of an E, like in debate. Okay, all right. So here is something that, this is what we did not do yesterday because I really don't know how to do this with you guys. So um, this is called a spelling spoilers and we're supposed to find the schwa words that are in the story. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to yesterday and I'm gonna read yesterday's story from yesterday. Those pictures from yesterday. Oh wait, it's not on there. It's not on this. Okay. I'm going to share my screen for a second because I'm supposed to read you the story. All right, hold on. I got to pull it up. One second. I'm going to pause the video for just a second. Okay. So I am going to read you the story called The Spelling Spoilers. And I want you to listen for the words that have a schwa sound. Okay. So either the uh, at the beginning or end of a word would be a good guess, okay? Indication. All right, so this is called the spelling spoilers. Deep in his underground lair, the head spelling spoiler spoke to the other spelling spoilers. Hello, spoilers. Our plot to ruin spelling in the United States is going well. He paused to let out a long cackle of strange sounding laughter. Ha, 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 ha. The head spelling spoiler went on. There are lots of children out there who can't spell well, and there are lots of adults who can't spell well either. And best of all, there are adults who are telling the children that English spelling makes no sense. All of these things show that our master plan to ruin the spelling in this country is working. Then he cackled again. <laughs> All the other spoilers began whispering happily among themselves. Then the head spoiler lowered his voice and began singing again. But I am afraid the news is not all good. The other spoilers fell silent. 
I have received an alarming report from Clinton, Tennessee. It seems students in Anderson County schools are learning what they need to know to become very good spellers. The spoilers fidgeted in their seats nervously. I am especially concerned about Miss Cofer's class. I am told the students in that class know five ways to spell the O sound. The spoilers moaned. I am told the students in Miss Cofer's class know four ways to spell the A sound. The spoilers groaned. And worst of all, I am told the students in Miss Cofer's class know seven ways to spell the E sound. The spoilers gasped. <gasps> no, it can't be true, cried one of the spoilers. The head spelling spoiler spoke again. Fellow spoilers, I don't have to tell you the situation is serious. If those students can spell sounds like A, O, and E, they are on the verge of becoming good spellers. There's only one thing that can stop them from becoming really good spellers, and that is our old friend, Schwa. Ah, oh, yes, Schwa. The spoilers all smiled and nodded. They knew that Schwa had been messing up children's spellings for many years. Schwa caused more spelling problems than almost anything else. It was a spelling spoiler's best friend. You know that Schwa is a sound that sounds a lot like uh, but it is not necessarily spelled with the letter U, and that's just what we need to ruin the children's spelling. Now the next few weeks are going to be very important. I want all of you to make yourselves invisible. Then I want you to go out to Miss Cofer's class whenever you see students are writing and they come to a word that has the schwa sound in it. I want you to be there whispering in their ears. Spell it with a U. Spell it with a U. All the spoilers started to chant, spell it with a U, spell it with a U. That's the spirit, said the head spoiler. If we can get them to spell the schwa sound with a U, they will make hundreds of mistakes, he cackled. <laughs> if we can get them to spell the schwa sound with a U, they will write words about like this. They would write the word about with a U instead of an A. I lost my page. Sorry, I lost my page. <laughs> if we can get them to spell the schwa sound with a U, they will write reporter with a U instead of an E. Or they will not know how it's really spelled. And best of all, they will write words like America with a U instead of an A. Oh, how I love to see the word America spelled with two U's. He crackled his loudest cackle yet. Ha, 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 ha. So, my little spoilers, you know what to do. Get out there and whisper in their ears. Convince them to spell every schwa sound with a U. Turn their spelling into rubbish. Spoil their spelling. <laughs> so 
So that was the story of the spellings. <laughs> Hope you enjoy that. That was interesting. All right, so here are here are some of the words that we just heard in the story that he wanted you to spell wrong. But like the head spoiler said, the kids in my class are too smart for that. They know that the schwa sound does not mean that you have the letter U. So we have the word about. Yeah, it says uh at the beginning, but it's spelled with an A. Good. Right, so we have the word China that we talked about yesterday a little bit. We have the uh at the end of the word, but we know it's not spelled with a U. The schwa sound makes it say uh, but the letter is an A. We have words like around. The uh at the beginning of the word, the schwa sound, is the letter A. We have words like Africa. Again, we have the schwa a uh, sound a uh, sound at the end with the letter A. Appetite. And see, sometimes it's with the letter E. That E in the middle says ah, uh, that's the schwa sound. Tennessee, that E in the middle there. It's the schwa sound. It says ah. Uh, good job. And we have other words like love that says ah. Uh, with O consonant E. Cousin, we talked about how OU can say uh also. And something that OE makes the uh sound. The word touch, the OE, OU makes the uh sound. All right, so that was a little tricky. There was some of that stuff that we could not do together because you don't have all of the workbook and we're not together to it but i wanted you to at least hear the story and be exposed to those words that have the schwa sound okay but we have a new story today and it is called fire so the last story that we read was the hungry troll and it ended with the knights coming up with a plan to scare off the troll and you guys remember what the plan was Yeah, they wanted to make a fire by the troll's home to scare it. So today's story is about the knights trying to scare away the troll with fire. And our spellings that we're going to see today, we have the uh sound with the letter A spelling in attack, attempt, alarming, approach, and afraid. And then we have the I sound with the IGH spelling in nightfall, sight, nights, and frighten. And then we have some vocabulary words. And the word defies means also at that page in the classroom. Sorry. The word devise means to come up with, like to devise a plan, to come up with or make a plan. Defeat means to lose, it means that you were defeated, you lost. Splendid is like absolutely amazing and perfect. Prickly, if you look at the cactus, cactus, you see all the little pokey things, they're very pokey and sharp. Crackling is a noise, like have you ever been to a bonfire and you could hear the wood as it was burning and it was crackling, making that popping sound? And a grove is an area in the forest. And the foot of the hill means that basically you're kind of like at the bottom of the hill. And then a deed is, um, it's a piece of paper that shows ownership of some land. All right, so do you think Sir Gus will offer to use fire to bravely scare away the troll? What do you think? What are some examples from past stories that explain how you're thinking, why you're thinking that? Like, I'm gonna think that no, like I think Sir Gus is gonna want someone else to do it because the past stories, he's not been the bravest of persons. And I think that if he does end up being the one who starts the fire, it'll be completely by accident because he's a little bit of a klutz. That's what I think, what do you think? 
All right, so let's read today's story to find out how Sir Gus will react when he is near the troll. Okay, so our story is Sir in the book Sir Gus today, and our story is called Fire. And if we look in our table of contents, chapter five starts on page 44. Okay, here we go, Fire. It was not hard to find the troll. It's cry when they are hungry. The knights simply followed the sound of loud sobs and eating. As nightfall neared, the knights arrived at the foot of a large hill. The troll had spent all day eating the rocks and plants on the hill. All that was left on the hill were some prickly plants and some old dying trees. Near the top of the, cave, of the hill was a cave. Scary troll sounds were coming from inside the cave. The knights met in a grove at the foot of the hill. They knelt down and made a plan. When it is dark, we will light our torches, said Sir Tom. Then we will creep up the hill. The sight of the flames will scare the troll and it will go back to its home beneath the ground. And what if that plan fails, asked Sir Ed. I don't care to be the troll's dinner. Well, do you have a better plan? Asked Sir Tom. Sir Ed said nothing. The other knights were quiet as well. At that very moment came the sound of a horse trotting nearby. Found you at last, said Sir Gus as he rode up to the knight. So my fellow knights, tell me, have you devised a plan of attack to defeat this monstrous troll? Yes, we have, said Sir Tom. We have agreed that our bravest knights will creep up the hill with the torch and frighten the troll away. Splendid idea, said Sir Gus. And who is going to attempt the brave deed, he asked, looking around. You, said Sir Tom and Sir Ed together. But, but, well, I, er, um, said a reluctant Sir Gus. It was no good trying to get out of it. Sir Tom handed Sir Gus a lit torch. Then he pointed at the cave. Sir Gus went up the hill alone. By the time he reached the mouth of the cave, it was pitch black. The lit torch cast shadows on the ground. Sir Gus looked around him. He saw shadows dancing on the ground. He was afraid, but he pressed on. From inside the cave came alarming troll sounds. Snick, the troll was eating bits of rock with his sharp teeth and spitting out the bits it did not like. Sir Gus approached the cave. Small pieces of rock came flying out. Some of them landed at Sir Gus's feet. Sir Gus jumped back, trying to avoid the flying pieces of rock. Suddenly, there was a thumping sound. Thump, thump, thump. The troll was coming out of the cave. As the troll got closer, the sounds got louder. Snick, snum, Sir Gus was afraid. He started to feel weak in the knees. At last, he fainted. His torch fell to the ground. It landed on some dry prickly plants near the mouth of the cave. The plants caught on fire. The flames got bigger quickly. From inside the cave came a scream. Then came the thumping sound of the large beast running away. Soon all that remained was the sound of the crackling flames. Sir Gus lay on the ground for a while. At last the heat from the fire woke him. He got up and ran back down the hill. When Sir Gus appeared, the knights shouted, 
brave Sir Gus lit the fire. He has driven away the troll. Hooray for Sir Gus. All righty, so today, I hope you enjoyed that. That was an exciting story. I wonder if the troll is really gone though, or did he just run somewhere close by? We'll have to wait and see. So for your work today, we are going to listen or reread the story again, and then I want you to answer the questions on worksheet 8.2. There are eight of them. Now listen, this down here, it says list four nouns from the story list for verbs from the story and list for adjectives from the story okay the other four are questions that you need to answer all right and then worksheet 8.3 is the actual story and that will already be uploaded for you so our learning targets for today were i can identify sounds in words I can read and write words with the schwa sound and spellings, and I can read the story, The Fire. You did all of those things. And I re realized yesterday that I was trying to get the video done in between doing the testing with you guys, and I forgot to explain your work on your grammar activities yesterday. So yesterday you had Section eight, vocabulary building, words about places. I think. Hold on a second. I'll make sure I don't tell you the wrong thing. Yeah, that was the right thing. I was telling you the right thing. Okay, so let me go back to sharing my screen. All right, so it was this one right here. Okay, so it says vocabulary building, words about places. You can use sentences to tell about places. And then it has a, just a little map here. Find the ocean, beach, island, mountains, and valley on the map. And those are labeled, okay? And it says name the word in each sentence that tells about a place. A bird flies over the island. The word was island. So you're just supposed to read those sentences and find the word that tells about a place. And you can highlight it or underline it or circle it, whatever you want to do, okay? So remember that words like beach, island, mountain, ocean, and valley name places. So I want you to choose in the next five questions, you're going to choose the word that correctly completes each sentence and then write the sentence. Just like type it beside it, okay? So here were the examples. There are many fish in the mountain or there are many fish in the ocean. So chose ocean, and then they rewrote the sentence below it, okay? So like number six, I take a boat to the valley or I take a boat to the island. Which one would make sense? So you're gonna circle the one that makes sense and then right over beside it, just put a text box and retype the sentence correctly, okay? And we're not going to do the writing application. I'm not going to require that as part of today's activity. Okay. Um, so that is your grammar work for today. And your spelling, you do have spelling. Yesterday you had ABC order. You did all 15 words in ABC order. Okay, and so today we're on page 58. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna give you a break today. No spelling work today, okay? So just your phonics worksheet and your grammar today, and then reread the story or listen to the story again. All right, and that's all that we're gonna do for today. So no spelling, just video, phonics worksheet, and grammar's acti grammar activity, all right? So you guys have a great afternoon, and I will see you tomorrow.